So we'll start by with the session chaired by Mina Aganagayich. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to the day two of the week two of our Strings Conference. So our first speaker of the day is uh, Yudi Tachikawa from Kavli IPMU, who will uh, tell us well on global anomalies of heterotic string theories. Yuji, please go ahead. It's a great pleasure to be able to speak at this nice conference. Let me first say that this video is pre-recorded because of the time zone difference between Japan and Brazil. Uh, right now, my small children are asleep, not very far from me, so I don't want to make any noise and wake them up. That would cause a lot of trouble for me. That said, I'm still on the other side of the Zoom, so you can ask me questions afterwards, but I'm going to answer you very quietly. Um, so let me start with a kind of introduction. String theorists often say that string theory is miraculously free of inconsistency, and when they feel particularly arrogant, uh, we sometimes say, well, string theory is or seems to be the only consistent theory of quantum gravity. My main question today is whether we are really sure about consistency. Of that, for example, uh, in fourth dimensions, as you know, there is a non-trivial large gauge transformation associated to pi 4 of SU2, which happens to be Z2. So if you have this discrete gauge transformation, and that produces a phase which is minus 1 to the power n. So the theory is inconsistent if the number is odd. Let us now ask the following question. Is Witten's SU2 anomaly absent in 4D heterotic compactifications? Well, somewhat surprisingly, this rather fundamental question is still open in 2021. I learned this question uh, from my colleagues in IPMU during the tea time slightly before the pandemic. Uh, they st studied this question assuming that there are four-dimensional n equals to supersymmetry. And they showed that the anomaly vanishes in many cases, but they didn't find a universal proof either. So their analysis was presented in a paper here, Enoki Sato Watari, uh, from May last year. Um, today, I'm not going to discuss this Witten's anomaly due to technical reasons. Instead, I'm going to discuss a related but slightly different global anomaly, which is a Z24 global anomaly in 2D heterotic compactifications. And the aim of this talk is to show that it vanishes. Um, for this purpose, I'm going to use the mathematical theory of topological modular forms and the associated segal stoltz teichina conjecture. So let me start. Let's first remind ourselves the perturbative heterotic strings construction. So let's consider heterotic compactification to space-time dimensions d. The world seat theory of the string consists of compactified space-time. There are fermionic partners. Together, they contribute d to left-moving central charge and three-halves d to the right-moving central charge. Therefore, in order to balance, you need to have an CFT, uh, which has CL equal to 2 D and given by 15 minus uh, 3 halves D. Typical case. The internal CFT should have the well known. value of CL being 60 and CR needs to vanish. As you know, there are only two possible choices. Uh, one is SO32, current a perturbative anomaly miraculously cancelled, as was first shown by Green and Schwartz, 1984. It then follows that the perturbative anomaly automatically for arbitrary smooth 
smooth geometric compactifications just because it vanishes in 10 dimensions. But the good thing about heterotic string is that you can use a genuine CFT which might not come from any geometry uh, as a internal CFT as long as it has the correct central charge. Matter whether the internal CFT classical or not, so that was done by Lehr here, Nielsen, Skelakens, and Warner in '88. So the question of the vanishing of the perturbative anomaly is settled. What about the global anomalies? Well, in 10D E8 times E8 superstring, well, it was shown to vanish in Witten's paper in 1986. This implies again that the global anomaly automatically vanishes in all smooth geometric compactifications of E8 times E8 heterotic strings. But again, there can be non-geometric compactifications where the internal CFT does not come from classical geometry. So, let me talk about the particular two-dimensional anomaly I'm going to discuss. It's a bit complicated, confusing, because the world sheet is 2D and the resulting super sorry space-time theory is also 2D. The internal CFT, in this case, has to have this particular central chance at 24 count 12. And we need to count how many massless fermions there are. For this purpose, well you need to open the um, R sector vacuum states of the internal CFT. And then the space-time chirality is basically given by the right-moving fermion number of the internal CFT. Therefore, uh, basically, the elliptic genus of the internal CFT encodes the net chiral number of fermions. So it gives the fermion anomaly. So let's say the elliptic genus of the internal CFT is given by this expression. So elliptic genus is the trace over the R sector Hilbert space with an insertion of minus one to the right moving fermion number. So this projects out the right moving modes to its uh, zero energy states. And you have a contribution from supersymmetric. Because the left moving central charge is 24, uh, this series from the term of the order Q inverse. So let's say it's given by A Q inverse plus B plus dot dot dot. Then uh, the standard technique shows that the leading coefficient A is the net of two dimensional space time gravity, you know, and B is the net chiral number of the space time uh, spin one half fermion. Therefore, the total fermion anomaly polynomial can be easily from a gravity node or contribution from a fermion is known and it's given by this minus 24a plus b times p1 over 48 where p1 is the pont checking class which is basically trace r squared so a gravity node contributes a 24th tw sorry 24 times that of a fermion that's not the only contribution to the anomaly you need to think about the b field one point function too so string one loop perturbation theory automatically generates the B field part one point function of this form and the coefficient n can be found by uh, string perturbation theory which boils down to the uh, integral over the fundamental region of the SL2z of the elliptic genus of the internal CFT and it results in basically minus a plus b over 24 as was found in 95 96. The reason why this e coupling to B produces the anomaly is that the gauge invariant field strength of B, which is H, is not just EB, but has a contribution coming from the transam stem of the gravitational connection, spin connection. Therefore, integral of B has the same anomalous variation as would come from uh, the anomaly polynomial P1 over 2. 
summarizing, let's say that elliptic genus of the internal CFT is AQ inverse plus B plus dot dot dot. Then this controls both the fermion anomaly and the B field one point coupling. So the fermion anomaly is minus 24A plus B times minus P1 over 48, while the B field coupling is this, uh, minus A plus B of over 24 and the integral of B. As I said, uh, the integral of B has the same anomalous variation as P1 over 2. And so you can see that, that these two contributions nicely cancel out and the perturbative anomaly vanishes. This is that green Schwarz is not an integer because the integral of a B transforms non trivially under the large gauge transformation of B. So this part can shift by one. So if B over 24 is not an integer, uh, this coupling can produce a non trivial phase, which is a 24th roots of unity. So when B is not divisible by 24, uh, this particular system can have a Z24 valued global anomaly. So that's the global anomaly I'd like to do. The central question is now formulated as follows. So let's take an n equals 0, 0,1 two-dimensional SCFT with CL and CR given by 24 and 12. So that's the uh, right structure for 2D theory to be used as an internal CFT for heterotic compactification down to 2D. Let's say its elliptic genus is given by AQ inverse plus B plus dot dot dot. The main question is whether the coefficient B, constant term B, is always divisible by 24. So this is not a string theory or quantum gravity, gravity question anymore. It's just a 2D CFT question and it's uh, quite a peculiar one. I've never thought about the divisibility of the constant part of the genus before I thought about this question. And I don't know how to approach this question in the standard way. One thing you can do is to go over the list of known examples. And if you go over uh, various papers in the past, you can find many examples. And but can we show this in general? Let's first use the theory of modular forms. So uh, let's discuss the elliptic genus again. So given a theory T, its elliptic genus is the Hilbert space, sorry, torus over the Hilbert space in the R sector with the minus one to the right moving fermion number. And uh, you count the number of states in the left moving norm supersymmetric side. So that's the partition function of the theory on T2 with the periodic spin structure, which makes it almost modular invariant, but up to subtle phases given by 24th roots of unity, which comes from the world sheet gravitational anomaly, which is given by the difference between CR and CL. So that makes the analysis a bit complicated. So it helps us to cancel this anomaly by adding new left moving fermions where new is given by uh, twice CR minus CL so that the combined system doesn't have any global anomaly, sorry, gravitational world sheet anomaly. What we have is then this combination. So you have the original elliptic genus and you multiply that by a fermionic contribution, which is given by the new power uh, of the data kit eta. We now have the following transformation law for this combined object. So if you perform SL2Z transformation, uh, you get this prefactor. This makes this combination phi w into a modular form of weight nu over 2. Mathematicians call phi w the written genus of this theory. So let's come back to the, our original question of heteroidic compactifications to 2D. In this case, uh, nu is given by minus 24, which means that we need to consider 
eta to the power minus 24 times the elliptic genus, which has this form. Combined, this is the modular form of weight minus 12 with integer coefficients, because they count the number of states, and it can have poles of order at most 2. So this part, eta to minus 24, can have uh, pole of order 1, and you also have Q inverse. So using the standard elementary theory of modular forms, you find the following. Uh, phi w, in our case, needs to be an integral linear combination of two possibilities. One is uh, e4 to the cube divided by delta squared, where e4 is the delta to the power 24. So that's the first possibility. And the second possibility is just in the inverse of delta. So the, the theory of modular forms allow us to determine the entire elliptic genus in terms of A and B. So th that's a progress, but it doesn't tell whether B is divisible by 24. For that purpose, you need to use a more sophisticated theory, that's the theory of topological modular forms. So what is this? Well, the ring of topological modular forms uh, generalizes and refines the ring of ordinary modular forms. So it was mathematically constructed by Hopkins and collaborators around 2000 using an amalgam of algebraic topology and algebraic geometry. And this topological modular forms is useful for us thanks to the segal stoltz teichina conjecture, which says the following. So TMF nu is an abelian group constructed by mathematician, but that's seems to be conjecturally equal to the following. So you consider the space of two-dimensional n equals 0, 1 supersymmetric theories with a specified amount of nu, which is the difference between the left-moving and right-moving central charge, and you, con you classify them according to uh, continuous deformations, like relevant, relevant marginal deformations, or RG flows, or adding some uh, SUSY breaking sector. In particular, if we are given a n equals 0, 1 SCFT t in two dimensions with a specified new, uh, that should determine a class t in this Abelian group TMF new. So why is this conjecture plausible? Well, mathematicians, uh, when constructed, uh, when they constructed TMF, uh, constructed also a map phi w which is a map from TMF nu to the set of modular forms of weight nu over 2 with integer coefficients and poles, which for us should correspond to sending a theory, two-dimensional theory T, to its Witten genus, which is an elliptic genus multiplied by delta quinta eta. Mathematicians also know how to describe uh, sigma models in terms of TMF class, so given a new dimensional manifold together with a B field satisfying certain conditions, uh, we should be able to describe two-dimensional sigma model with M as the target space together with a B field, and that should determine some a 0, 1 SCFT in 2D. So in view of the conjecture, it should determine a class in TMF nu, and let's denote that as sigma mu and B. Mathematicians uh, also showed that when they combine th these two constructions of getting a TMF class and they map into the modular form, and then they get some uh, modular forms, but that turns out to be equal to uh, what we expect as a physicist. So in that case, a uh, sigma model, uh, we know the sigma model, so we can compute the elliptic genus of that sigma model, and we can multiply that with the theta kin theta, and that agrees with what mathematicians constructed. So uh, that gives a partial uh, justification for this conjecture. The good thing about mathematicians' work is that they determined the image of this map, phi w, completely. So for example, uh, delta, which was a uh, modular discriminant, to some power k, 
uh, is in the image of phi w if and only if the coefficient d is a multiple of 24 over gcd 24 comma k so that's a weird statement and let's use that so our question was the following we take 2d n equals 0 comma 1 scfd with the central charge at 24 comma 12 and let's say its elliptic genus is a q inverse plus b plus da 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 the question was whether the constant term b was divisible by 24. Please recall that otherwise heterotic compactifications to 2D can have a Z24 global anomaly. We already argued, just by using the ordinary theory of modular forms, that the Witten genus of this theory is a linear combination of either this one or the other one. But the added information we now have is that assuming the conjecture and the mathematical result, uh, the image of phi w contains only a d delta k where d is a multiple of 24 over gcd 24 comma k. In our case, k is minus 1, right? So 24 divided by gcd 24 comma 1 minus 1 is 24. This means that the coefficient minus 744 times 8 plus b should also be divisible by 24 meaning that b itself is divisible by 24 that's what you want to show done great but you would ask me usually you studied your talk by talking about Witten's su2 anomaly what happened to that well more generally the question of global anomaly of heterotic compactifications down to di d dimensions with gauge symmetry g can be translated to the study of a certain TMF group. So that's a question in algebraic topology. That is a very difficult group to compute. And I asked a number of f friends of mine who are mathematicians, but nobody computed it for me. But one mathematician told me the following. Well, there's a way to show that the global anomaly vanishes uh, without doing any case-by-case -case analysis. The important point is to consider all cases at once and use the structural result of TMF. So that's a work in progress with Yamashita, a um, brilliant young mathematician in Kyoto, and I hope to report it in a preprint soon. Let me finish with some comments. Clearly, we are not really done, right? We simply transferred uh, the question of the global anomalies of hedgehog strings to the validity of the segal stoltz teichner conjecture, right? So it's important, I think, to test the conjecture in our own way. Well, there are a couple of works doing exactly that, like this. And let me just add one implication of the conjecture so that you can think about it. So as I said, uh, the image of this map, phi w, has been mathematically determined. And in particular, uh, delta to power the power k is in the image of phi w only if, if and only if d is a multiple of 24 over gcd 24 comma k. So what does it mean? Well, it means many things, but one consequence in our language is as follows. Uh, so. If the elliptic genus of two-dimensional zero comma one theory is simply one, then the difference of the central charge Cl minus Cr is divisible by 288. Conversely, there should be a two-dimensional n equal zero comma one theory whose elliptic genus is just one without any dependence on Q, and Cl minus Cr is plus minus 288. So that particular theory will be uh, quite a marvelous one. But as far as I know, nobody has constructed it. Okay, let me summarize. Today I considered global anomalies in heteroclitic string theories. Uh, such questions can be answered using the mathematical theory of TMF, using the seagull stoltz teichner conjecture, saying that TMF nu describes the classification result of n equals 0 comma 1 supersymmetric theory with specified difference of the left moving and right moving central charge up to continuous deformation and this conjecture not only 
tells us about heterotic anomalies, but also uh, many unexplored properties of two-dimensional theories, which I think are worth pursuing. And I just want to say that the list of HEPTH papers on TMF is not very long. The exhaustive list is really this. So there are less than 10 papers. It's a young field, and I would welcome any newcomers to the field. Okay. Okay, let's, let's thank uh, Yuji for uh, a wonderful talk. I think we managed to weather <laughs> the technological <laughs> difficulties successfully with the helps of the community, which is a Yeah, I'm thing. sorry about right, the low see. video quality. I, I think in the end it was manageable. Um, okay. Let's see, uh, questions. I see uh, Deb Harvey has a question. Hi, Yuji. Hi. Uh, thanks, thanks for the nice talk. Um, there's recently, well, fairly recently, been a proof of Shellican's conjecture uh, regarding 71 holomorphic C equals 24 uh, VOAs or conformal field theories. And right. um, these have gauge groups uh, with various levels. And each one of them gives rise to a compactification of the heterotic string down to two dimensions. So is there some um, either either check of, of TMF computations for these theories, um, or do they do these examples inform some computations uh, related to anomalies in TMF? Uh, thank you for your question. I, I haven't looked into the case with, with uh, symmetries, but uh, at least you can use them for the compactification without thinking about gauge symmetries, right? Still, uh, this needs to be compatible with the thing I talked about being that the constant term of the elliptic genus is divisible by 24, right? And you can go right. over the list of Skellig and 71 choices, and indeed they are all divisible by 24. So that's one consistency check between TMF predictions and the list of by Skellig. Thank you. I, I thought you also had some condition no on gauge groups. Ah, yes, um, but uh, the problem is that the uh, TMF group controlled in the case with gauge group is, uh, well, at least mathematically well-defined, but it's very difficult to compute algebraic topologically. So if you tell, if you uh, give me a very good mathematician who can do this computation for me, then <laughs> you can try to match what Skelikens tells us uh, against Skelikens against TMF prediction, but uh, yeah, that's the main problem I'm having. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, next is uh, Greg Moore. Greg, go ahead. Yeah, my question is actually pretty closely related to Jeff's. Um, so is it is it legal to take a purely holomorphic conformal field theory so that the uh, right moving n equals one is the trivial theory because then you could just take the 12th tensor power of the Leech Labs. You, you can use that. Yes. Your, your theory with uh, 288. Oh, um, so, so for the positive one, it's, yeah, I, I should have, I, I think I said something slightly wrong. Um, uh, plus 288 is okay. Um, so th that's exactly what you described. But the problem is to describe the theory with uh, CL minus CL being minus 288. That cannot be made with ah. construction. <laughs> okay, then the construction. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's that's one challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should have written only one particular uh, sign. I'm sorry about that. Okay, uh, I think Komran Vafa has a comment. Komran? Yes, very nice talk, Yuji. Actually, it's Thank a you. minor. I think you meant a perturbative heterodicy in compactification because if you allow for five brains, you oh, can yeah, get indeed. one, right? Yes, indeed. Yes, just want to make sure. Maybe you made that comment. Maybe I missed it, but at any rate, that's the that's yeah, just. I, thank you for pointing that out. Indeed, it will be very interesting to study uh, non perturbative heterotic strings where the internal CFT is non geometric. Yeah, that's not explored very much. So that's, I think, a new core. But if non geometric, you mean even just five brain? Five brain. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, geometric plus for five brain is already right. out of my consideration. Exactly. But, uh, exactly. Right. Yeah. Nice stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have one more minute. Thank you. Uh, and um, uh, Daniel Harlow has a question in the chat. Uh, no, but you, I think IES has a comment. So I, I, yeah, why don't you call on them? Because 
Sure. Okay. okay let's go with IS. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have a very general naive question. When you okay. compactify to two dimensions, you have to integrate over the moduli. So That's my right. question is, in, has, goes in two directions. One, can there be new anomalies associated with this interval that are not present otherwise? And second, is there a way of canceling other anomalies by doing this interval? Is another contribution from that that would cancel? I have no, no reason to suspect that the answer is yes. I'm just raising this as a question. Uh, that, that's uh, indeed an important issue. Um, I, I'm not addressing the proper uh, path integral over the moduli of the two-dimensional CFD in, in my analysis. So um, yeah, that, that part can uh, give rise to additional anomalies, which I didn't uh, discuss. So that's my honest uh, comment. Yeah, I don't know how to. And can they uh, cancel any of the anomalies that exist for fixed value? Or I, I, I don't think. I don't think so. You need to first cancel the anomaly at the fixed value, and then you need to think about the integration over the moduli. Yeah. But then eventually that will necessarily hit strongly coupled a singularity at the moduli space of CFT to the CFT. So that would be a very complicated analysis. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for the comment. Question. Okay, I think uh, there's some discussion in the chat, which maybe we should uh, continue on yeah. Slack. It's probably a better okay. format. Right. All right, let's all thank Yuji again for a wonderful talk and for joining us. And uh, hopefully, we did not wake up his children. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. And so I'm sorry about the video problem. Thank you very much. <laughs>